Oh yeah, it's time to bring out the old box of source maps so I can show them all to you. Man, this box is quite dusty, isn't it? So, you guys really liked the last time I rummaged through some of my old maps slash experiments in the gold source engine. I asked you guys if you wanted to see me do the same thing for my source engine maps and a lot of you really seemed to like that idea as well. So I went through a whole bunch of my source engine maps and I picked five that I thought were pretty interesting to show off to you guys. These range from experiments to actual attempts to create something. And the games that they're made for differ as well. From Half-Life 2 Episode 2 to Black Mesa and even CSGO. So this will definitely be a nice smorgasbord of different maps here. Without further ado, let's get into these. Lambda Federation. Our first stop is what I consider to be a nice starting point. My very first actual functional map ever. Noob Map 1. Yep, that's what it's actually called. I made this map all the way back in 2017 because I really, really wanted to try creating stuff for the Source engine. At the time, I was also starting a brand new YouTube channel of the back of my failing comedy sketch channel called Glorious Rigby. And I thought learning mapping for the first time would probably make for some interesting content. So the first video I ever uploaded on Glorious Rigby was me explaining how I created this map and why I decided to make it in this particular way. Looking back at that video though, yeah, my voice is extremely cringe and the editing leaves something to be desired sometimes. But hey, it's an interesting video nonetheless and if you want to watch it then click the card at the top of the screen right now. Now looking back at the map itself almost seven years later, yeah, it does reek of first map alright. Everything looks incredibly boxy, displacements look wacky, I used a light map scale of 1 in a lot of places which makes the shadows look nice and sharp, but this could be a problem when you compile the map and find out that your map's file size is bigger than, well, it really should be. And generally there could be a lot of improvements here, but to be honest, I kind of like the wooden scaffolding that I built here. I could have easily made a straight staircase that went up to the roof, but no. I went out of my way to build this instead, and it does give the map somewhat of a centerpiece to look at. Oh, and look at this tiny little room right here. It has a little desk with a monitor on it, and there is a couch with a TV right in front of it that shines an ENV projected texture into the room. This obsession with dynamic lights will come back later, by the way. Oh, and the TV is even plugged in! Attention to detail right here. So, yeah, it's definitely not the best thing I've ever made, but it's an interesting first step into this hobby of mine. Let's move on to Black Mesa, because I made a few maps for that game as well. All of them unreleased, though. This one is called GR Office, and I think it's obvious why. Oh, the GR stands for Glorious Rigby, by the way. I used this tag for a bunch of my maps. This map is supposed to take place inside of the office complex within the Black Mesa Research Facility. We got a hallway right here leading towards this area with some kind of reception desk. I think that's what this is supposed to be. We have a nice look through some windows here where we can see a hallway that we probably should try to avoid going to. Luckily, it's already barricaded. If we look to the left of this door, though, we can see straight to the outside. The sun shines nicely through the windows, painting shadows across the floors below. I was obsessed with Black Mesa's cascading shadow maps, so I had to at least try to use them in one of my maps. Then when we re-enter the hallway, there is a server room because, well, where else are we gonna run Lambda Generation from, of course? And then across from that server room, we have an office, which looks pretty roomy, despite the giant pillar in the middle of it. With this map, I really wanted to get myself familiar with the model system in Source, because not all model entities will work with every model, resulting in your models sometimes not showing up in-game if you selected the wrong entity for them. And then there is this staircase right here that leads to an empty room. Woo! I guess there is lots of room for activities here though. And that's kind of all there is to it. It looks pretty alright, albeit unfinished. And some of the models are for some reason very bright. They didn't used to look like this, so I think this might be a new issue. 
Black Mesa has been updated a ton since 2018 when I made this map, so maybe it just needs a good recompile at some point. On to the next map, which is also made for Black Mesa. This is GR Vertical, and as you can see, it's very unfinished. This, uh, this is a theme for all of these maps, by the way. But I suppose this is even less finished than the others I've shown. I mean, there are even still developer textures all over the place. So my goal for this map was to create a level that used verticality to make things interesting. You see how high this room goes, and do you see these hanging, or rather floating, containers here? Yeah, you were eventually meant to be able to get to those and jump across them. As you can tell though, that actually never materialized. After taking the normal route, walking over these balconies, these wooden blanks, and climbing a ladder, we eventually get to a door that leads to this hallway over here. I just love how ominous these pipes look with the red light behind them. No idea why I did this, but I guess I just thought it looked cool. Taking the stairs, we eventually get to a storage room of sorts where our path to the exit is blocked off by Gordon's worst fear. Metal shelving units. So we cleverly have to duck underneath these pipes and smash a crate to get to the other side of them. Yeah, I made the path actually not straightforward. Good on me. Walking up some more stairs, we get to the other hallway with some interesting piping going on over the ceiling, and once we open this door, we're back in the main room again. But there is nothing else to play through. This is kind of where the map ends. It's a shame because I do like the concept of this map. Maybe I should finish this at some point and actually turn this into a thing. Although I think I'd refactor a lot of it though. Make the place feel a bit more lived in. I feel like these corridors and rooms actually need to serve some kind of purpose because now I kind of have a feeling that they don't. They are just a series of corridors and a room and, well, nothing more. But nonetheless, this was an interesting experiment. Oh, and I experimented with area portals here, which are a sort of optimization technique making Source not render stuff that's behind a door. And it works. Sort of. So this is an interesting one, because yes, I tried making a map for CSGO. This is GR Warehouse, and no, I have no idea what game mode this was supposed to be made for. Probably just Deathmatch or Arms Race, to be honest. And as the title suggests, it's supposed to be taking place in and around a warehouse. We got this little starting area here, and you can go two directions from here. You can go inside of a small warehouse that's mostly empty, or inside of the office part of the warehouse, where people are supposed to be working. No idea what kind of company this is supposed to be, but probably some kind of web store or something. Both of these areas will eventually connect to this bigger warehouse area, which basically serves as some kind of maze to get trapped in. You know, looking back at it now, I don't think that would have been a very fun situation to play in. Yeah, it's a bit rough around the edges as you can see, but hey, at least some of the graphics work here is pretty alright. I like how the lighting from outside shines on this desk with all the stuff on it. I remember setting this up this way very deliberately, and I had a lot of fun doing this. And this little office area is pretty nice as well. It looks over this outside area, and you might be able to kill someone from this window. If I were to remake this map in Source 2 for Counter-Strike 2, I would probably redo the entire layout of it. Especially the warehouse, and make it a bit more fun to play through. I also feel like the map needs to be a bit bigger than it currently is. It's very cramped, even for the most basic game modes. But hey, it's the best CSGO map I've ever made, and I was pretty proud of it at the time. Even if it remained unfinished. And hey, look, it even has a 3D skybox. Something I have very rarely ever played with. And now we're at the last map for this video. And we have kind of come full circle here because we're back at Half-Life 2, Episode 2. And this map is simply called Story Map. Just like a bunch of other maps I've shown in this video, this was a genuine attempt at creating something someone could eventually play through. You start off in this overly detailed hallway, and as you make your way through it and turn the corner, you're met with... Fire. Oh gosh, the place is on fire! Let's quickly get into this room and find an exit. Oh boy, there are combine soldiers here. Yup, I decided to experiment with putting actual enemies in this map. So you have to do some work in order to make sure you don't die here. You also spawn with your suit and some basic weapons to use, so this shouldn't be too much of a problem. 
After having defeated Mr. Lone Combine here, we can go through this hole in the wall and enter a brand new room by going through this door and... Well... Mr. Lone Combine might have not been that guy's real name because there are more soldiers waiting for you right here. With your newly obtained SMG, you can take these guys out pretty easily though. Ah, it looks like they set up shop here pretty recently. But for what purpose exactly? I guess we'll never find out because yep, this map is also unfinished. Gosh, can I not finish anything here? On a serious note though, I think this is one of the best looking maps I've made so far. Especially the first room with the combine in it. It looks properly dilapidated and the lighting I think is nearly spot on. I really love how the lighting from the other room shines on the combine soldier, highlighting him in an otherwise hard to see in room. Now that is what I call level design. And I like how I highlighted these enemies with a red projected texture light. Not only are they clearly marked now, you also get some nice dynamic shadows back for it. Love that stuff, man. My only regret is that I didn't finish it. Seriously, maybe my goal this year should be to just finish something. Maybe. I mean, technically I did release TTT Forgotten at some point, but that was never actually really finished either. Anyway, this is a cool map that I think deserves to be finished one day. And maybe one day... I actually will get to. And that's it. Those are the five maps I wanted to show you. Now, of course, there were many other maps that didn't make the cut because they either just didn't work or because they were like a room with a crate in it or something like that. Nothing interesting to see there. I guess a theme with these maps as well is that I never really finish anything, huh? I start maps, then make them all nice looking, at least by my standards at the time, and then I abandon them and start new maps. Has anyone ever played The Beginner's Guide? It's a game developed by Davey Raiden, the same guy that created the Stanley Parable. And it's about a map maker named Koda who, just like me, never really finished any of his mapping work. And the narrator, voiced by Davey himself, leads you through these maps. It's a very interesting little game and I highly recommend it if you haven't experienced it yet. But yeah, I guess I'm a lot like Koda, huh? At least I'm narrating over my own maps though. You know what I do tend to actually finish though? Videos! And about that, I got to finish this one. So what do you think of my maps? Do you think they're alright? Do you think they suck? Let me know, I can take the criticism. And while you're down there, don't forget to like the video and to subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. We just reached 27k subscribers and it would be really nice to reach 30k soon. So let's try that, shall we? In the meantime, get creative. Go ahead and make something. Doesn't matter if you never end up finishing it. The experience alone and the skills you'll obtain from it will count. And hey, is anything actually ever finished? Thank you.